Hello, everybody. Happy Star Trek Tuesday. You've done it. You've powered through the first 40% of the week, the work <gasps> week, that is. So uh, congratulations on that. And congratulations to making it to another edition of The Main Viewer. We are so happy you're here. And we've got so much news to discuss with you. So much sports-related news, if you can believe that. Don't leave yet. It's kind of Star Trek. Ah, oh, they're leaving. No, I swear <laughs> it's Star Trek related. Come back. Come back. Um, we've got some merger news. Mm -hmm. And by news, it's it's news, but it's not anything right. that's imminent or any, you know, whatever. Yeah. But, you know, there are things floating around, and uh, we'll talk a bit about that. We'll also talk about why uh, Star Trek is extremely sports related right now. For all of you Star Trek slash sports fans, which I think it's like the Venn diagram is like 90%, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like the uh, eclipse. Yeah, Star Trek also <laughs> is enjoying some coffee. That's an interesting thing. Um, Captain Rayner. Some people are talking about Captain Rayner. How do you feel about him? Love him? Hate him? We'll talk about that. We've got a lot to cover. Also, oh, Walter Canning. We're not the covering the coffee. They're not sponsoring us. But we start getting samples. <laughs> Do you think they will sponsor us, though, eventually? I mean, they're, everybody who's writing them up and talking about them is getting samples. So, Really? Oh. So maybe if we talk about them, we'll get samples. I think that's, I think you have to not talk about them until they sponsor you. This is a tough choice. How about... <laughs> How about two of us talk about it and the mm -hmm. other two play hardball? Yeah, I think that's a good a good plan. All right, Anne Marie and I will play hardball. <laughs> and we will discuss at length about the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll get into the news, everybody. There's a lot to talk about, as we said. Hello to KL Bliss, John, what's up? Joshua, Dave, Chanel, Linda. Lucia, what's up? I mean, oi. Uh, Robert Kaiser out in Austria. Uh, Red is native. Happy Tuesday to you. May Barella, what's up? Hi, Roman. Interesting spelling on Roman. And hello to Rose Kirby out in the UK. What's up to everybody? They, oh, hi, Marianne. Oh, hi, Mom. All right. You say hi, mom, the same way you say hi, Bob. Did you know that? <laughs> uh, my nephew just called me looking for my mom. So glad he found me. What's up, Faith Howell? Hello, back of the head. That's John Orchiola of Screen Rant, everybody. All right. So everybody, please make sure you like this video. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon for notifications. If you're listening in, give us a five-star rating and a nice review. And uh, we'd really appreciate that. Melissa Longo's here. Mm, yes, I am here. Hi. <laughs> Ready for baseball. See, yes. sports do oh. go with Star Trek. Yes. From For a long time now. Mm -hmm. Decades and decades. It's true. Always. Like Parisi Squares. <laughs> cool shirt, by the way. Uh, everybody, you can get that shirt as well as the shirt I'm wearing. Riza and chill. Be the envy of your friends. <laughs> and the... <laughs> And the object of everybody's desire by getting this Riza and Chill shirt or the Decor Province oh. Major shirt. Oh, it's Dr. So Anne Marie cool. Siegel has it as well, showing a lot of thought. It's my there. favorite. I got so many compliments on this shirt in San Francisco. Like, it actually made me new friends. <laughs> awesome. I love it. Nice. Uh, you can get all those shirts in any size and color and style. At the uh, link in the description box below, just click the Star Trek and Chill online store, purchase your very own, and enjoy. Yeah. Also, so that's Anne Marie Seagull, everybody. She's the walking exclamation point. Hi. My name is Ryan T. Husk, and Jenny R. Johnson is wearing a <gasps> shirt made by Melissa. You could get it at the Introverted Republic. Yes, com. absolutely. It's the Cisco, <laughs> and he loves baseball, which is also a sport. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> also as well as the baseball as day. well as that baseball <laughs> yeah 
off to a great start, everybody. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> this is going to be a fun mm. one. So I guess we'll just get into the news. What do you say, Ian Winehouse, in the live chat? <laughs> Let's do it. Yes. All right. First things first, everybody, I know what is on everybody's mind. So let's just get to it because it is kind of important. And uh, it's actually brought to you by today.com. Pretty big in pop culture news. Today.com ah. says <laughs> Cody Rhodes on his emotional championship win. And what his father would have thought, everybody knows his father is Dusty Rhodes, rest in peace. His brother is Dustin Rhodes. I believe they're the Runnels family, actually, Cody Runnels, oh, Dustin Runnels. Runnels, and Dusty Runnels. Anyway, so it reads, uh, we'll just go through this whole thing real quick. Okay, maybe not the whole thing, but this was a WWE event. Uh, WrestleMania happened on Rob Saturday. Was there. Right. Saturday so that is and Trek. Sunday. That's right. Saturday <laughs> and Sunday, two full days, wrestling goodness, back of the head in the live chat. He watched all of it. He knows everything that went down. It was nuts. So you might be asking, though, how is Cody Rhodes related to Star Trek? That's a weird. Question. It's not weird because back when he was in AEW wrestling, which is actually covered by John Orchiola, who's back of the head. Yeah. Uh, he covers Star Trek and AEW for ScreenRant.com. But he'll tell you, this happened a couple of years ago. Cody Rhodes came out ready to do battle in this cool Star Trek cosplay. What? Amazing. Oh, oh cool. Yes. I love his upside down badge. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yes, the upside down badge. His buddy here, I don't remember his name, but John Orkill in the live chat will tell you. That's his wife wearing seven of nine. Here, this is Diamond hey, Dallas baby. Page. That's right, the yoga master. <laughs> and their dog, whose name I don't know. Oh, that's incredible. Wow, is that Burberry scarf regulation? <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody oh, in the live chat, let us know out of everybody in the Star Trek universe, who could you see wearing this scarf? Who Good do you question. think would go, would whole... wear this scarf? Anybody. Malcolm Reed. Yeah, I was looking at Enterprise too. I was thinking maybe Archer. He's just like, it's cold on the bridge. I'm going to wear my scarf. Uh, he'd wear his like Stanford scarf for wherever he <laughs> yeah. Oh, are, are we just talking scarves or are we talking Burberry scarves? That specific yeah. scarf. Burberry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I don't think he's a Burberry mm. man. He seems to meat and potatoes. Yeah. yeah. Although he did like water polo, so maybe. Yeah, he's a bit of an anomaly like that, Archer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, as Anne-Marie alluded to earlier, there are a couple other, there are actually some wrestlers, uh, professional wrestlers that have been in Star Trek in the past, right? Like The Rock. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. the big show, Paul White. Yep. Uh, now, here's the real contest. Um, John Orkiola, who is back of the head in the live chat, he can't answer because he probably knows all these answers. What other professional wrestlers have been in Star Trek? Or what other Star Trek actors have been in professional wrestling other than those guys? That's the big question. Everybody in the live chat, let us know. So now they're all thinking... How much more wrestling can we cram into all this? What's even <laughs> happening anymore? Well, here's the reason for all this, all these shenanigans. Everybody knows. Let me see. Let's find this. The news is, as mentioned uh, behind us here, is that Skydance is reportedly looking to uh, supercharge Paramount and potentially merge it with another streamer. And one of the ones that they mentioned was Peacock, which is the home of WWE wrestling. You see it all. Oh, great. <laughs> it really is. Wow. It all... Feel. Beautifully done. Thank Beautiful. You. It's just, you know, sometimes life just hmm. 
comes together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Huh. So, quite impressive. But I thought we only had one sports thing to talk about. That's amazing. All sports, all the time. Okay. <laughs> So uh, this is from our good friends over at trekmovie.com. And I know what they're saying in the live chat. We want to read the rest of the Today article. We will. We will. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, next. Here it is. Last week, merger talks for Paramount Global heated up with reports that the media company that produces and controls the Star Trek franchise had entered into exclusive talks with Skydance Media. One of the big questions has been how such a deal would impact Paramount Plus, home to original Star Trek programming. Now a picture of a possible future with the streaming service is starting to emerge. Dun, dun, dun. So here's the fear, right? We all worry that, hey, yeah. when a new boss takes over, or a company merges or gets swallowed, anything can happen, right? I mean, yeah. if you're working for company A and company B eats it, you don't know if you're all going to get laid off. You don't mm -hmm. know if things are going to continue or if the new boss can be like, all right, we're going to, you know, change things around here, say. Well, this is even more complicated. So in Glorious Trek's birth, who I love, they did a really great, we did it. They did a really great in-depth discussion of this a couple weeks ago, and I mean, Skydance was still included, even though like it wasn't as much of a forerunner right now. But they kind of looked at like all the different options for who could buy it and what that means. And obviously, like with Paramount, the really big worry is that like the picture, like the movies, get separated from the TV shows, and then there's also the streaming service. But then they also have this huge asset, which is their studio space, which mm -hmm. can also be like very appealing for like an apple or somebody so it's just scary with paramount because it's so many different parts and they are like except for star trek you can separate them pretty easily that it would get sold off like piecemeal mm -hmm. and then that would be really bad for star trek mm. hmm. so it seems like this deal like isn't is definitely like one of the better options we've seen and it looks like like the business, like Wall Street is agreeing because the prices are on their stock is, is going back up. Hmm. You know, it's really fun about this right now. Uh, good what? information, by the way, Dr. Anne Marie Siegel, uh, is that the live chat is answering the, uh, the scarf question. question, but I'm pretending like they're answering the wrestling question. <laughs> oh, okay. So. So the first thing I saw was Doug Jones. I'm like, ah, Doug Jones in WrestleMania 96, you know, doing the, the flying elbow. But he actually would be a great uh, one for the the scarf for sure. Yep. Uh, Linda Andreg says that. Great one. Faith Howell says Neelix. Back mm -hmm. of the head says Jack Crusher. That's I think that's it. That's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Boom. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, my mom said Mary Dwarf. Which is hilarious because I saw Michael Dorn walking around in New York and he was wearing it in gray, like the same <laughs> scarf. So. And it did look amazing on him. Mm. Yeah. Oh, there's another wrestler I'd forgotten. I just did a quick Google search. Oh. But this is one that that is I'm drawing a blank. Known. And I think it's also Enterprise. Wow, Enterprise has the most, right? They had uh, The Rock, they had The Big Show, and they had mm -hmm. this particular well, because, wrestler. Like, um, Voyager time, they, that was like UPN's flagship show, and UPN was like known for wrestling and Star Trek. So yeah. they were always looking for ways to like weirdly merge the audiences. Are you yeah. saying this is going to, you're right, this is going to be a, re a reuniting of the yes. two. <laughs> this is not a merge. <laughs> This is a reunion. They're coming yes. back together like mm -hmm. they were before. Ah, uh, Janeway and Hulk Hogan together again. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Hmm. I'm stumped. Anyway, so while everybody's guessing on that, let's see if anybody has it. And while they're guessing, we'll get back into the news. Um... Oh, and I th I think Boimler would wear that scarf. Oh, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. While he does his butt shimmy walk. Yes. Yeah. 
Oh, Matt Boardman says that. He said, oh, no, wait, Ryan was doing a Boimler walk there. Oh, okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> he's predicting the future. That's so weird. <laughs> All right. Oh, um, my God. Okay, Joshua Reeves says, big show. Yep, definitely <laughs> him. Okay, so a little bit more on this article here. Let's pull it back up. What a little wrestling tease. I know. <laughs> well, that's why people watch this show is for the wrestling teases. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's true. It's what we're known for. <laughs> Here we go. So it continues, the article that is, continues when the first when reports the first about, about Paramount Global potentially being sold or merged started in December. Industry analysts suggested Paramount Plus might not survive the corporate shakeup. While Paramount has seen consistent growth with its streaming service, that's the part I like to see. Mm -hmm. Good work by Anthony Pascal here. Yeah. Oh, which also side note, his coverage of like the business side of Paramount is just phenomenal. Like really is. coverage. It's amazing. Clearly, he knows a lot about the business side, definitely. Mm -hmm. So it says, while Paramount has seen consistent growth with its streaming service, it has yet to turn a profit. Oops. However, now that Skydance Media is in an exclusive talks to take over Paramount, they are apparently planning on keeping Paramount Plus, thank goodness, but will make some changes. What kind of changes? Are we talking scary ones? Well, it continues. The New York Times reports the plan calls for Skydance to supercharge Paramount streaming capabilities, mm. great, improving personalization with better algorithmic re recommendations and making it more efficient through better deals with data providers. Okay, so this is all great stuff. None of that is like taking off this content and adding this or hiking up the prices. Exactly. Or anything. It yeah. sounds like they're actually mm -hmm. meaning like improving. And their algorithm is awful. So they do need it. But I like, they always like, they never, anytime there's a new episode of Star Trek and I click onto Paramount, it's never like the first thing they recommend to me. I'm like, how is that? Yeah. I watch so much mm. Star Trek. Also just in general, this how is, is it true. the first thing? Yeah. And then yeah. I'll like, it never recommend, it might recommend it. It'll be like one other Star Trek series instead of all of them. And then totally. I have to say like, on my own research, I found ghosts that wasn't recommended to me. And then I just found a new one that I'm like, well, two new ones that I'm super into, like Elspeth, which is so good. And then um, So Help Me Todd or something, which is also really good. All on Paramount and none of these were recommended to me. And I'm like, you guys. You don't know me at all. I heard about them That's from, what like, I'm saying. Fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm watching Star Trek solely on Paramount Plus. <laughs> a, new, a new episode drops. I go on there and I don't see it. And yeah. it's like that song. It's like, if you don't know me by now, <laughs> right? Oh my God, you guys have a, you, your song. <laughs> so true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I, that, that happened with Discovery this past week. Mm -hmm. I, I went to look at the new episode for the new episode when it dropped and it wasn't even a recommendation, and I watch a lot of Star Trek too. <laughs> yeah, there should be a like new episode this week or today or whatever, like right. every yes. like, streaming out on on Amazon. And then yeah. the other crazy thing that does make me sort of nervous is this is like since Discovery first came on the air, and then every Star Trek show ever, I've seen like zero signs anywhere in New York for it. And I'm like, what? Just this is such a like Discovery fan hotbed. They're everywhere here. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how? Yeah. Is and Paramount's located in Times Square. So I'm like, how's there not one picture there? Nothing in the subway, nothing in those mm. like things that change by the like bus stops. Mm. It's crazy. Huh. It's so popular. I saw the sign. And it, and it opened, opened up, up my, your eyes. Opened my eyes. <laughs> uh, that's like a strike in bowling right there. It's really good, yeah. <laughs> so rolled it and they all... <laughs> ah. <laughs> Uh, no, good information. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like we're all huge fans of the content that Paramount Plus is giving us. And this is a point that I've never realized is that they need to improve how they present 
that content yeah. to us because just imagine if they were doing that with i mean star trek fans are going to find star trek on mm -hmm. paramount plus but what about all the other people that have paramount plus that are right. casual fans or that aren't fans yet present it to them yeah. show yeah. them hey look at this new indiana jones kind of star trek episode that's coming out here's a little trailer like yeah. what netflix does and then you go yeah i mean okay i'll click on it just to yeah. see and then like an hour later you're like oh that was pretty good mm -hmm. yeah. and they're talking about wanting to bring new people into the in into the fandom mm -hmm. and into the franchise yep. so well and bring the them. <laughs> cbs coo was saying that star trek is such a hot commodity it's one of their mm. biggest and most lucrative franchises. So why not push that more? Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Hmm. Why not? What else can you tell us about why this not? situation, Ryan? Well, like, they really do have better shows than I thought. And I'm like actively super into three other shows that aren't Star mm. Trek. So I'm like, how right. are you not like promoting those either? So you're literally yeah. promoting right. zero of four, four of the like, IPs I'm super into right now. Yeah. And I'm not That's what I wanted to ask you, Anne Marie. Besides anything Star Trek related, what is the best show on Paramount Plus or okay. movie? Well, I would say Ghost is so good. Be and like some of the UK seasons are on there too now, but the US ones are so good too. And I know a bunch of us are really watching it after, especially after you guys watched it on Watch the First. It's so much fun. Mm. Muhammad's a big fan. But then Elspeth, which is new, and I think it's a spinoff of The Good Wife, but like yeah, she's I been on a, a couple of shows as that character. Yeah, she's mm -hmm. so fun, and she's it's like set in my neighborhood, so I like watching it that for that reason too. But it's just like legitimately a good show. It's kind of like a cop show, and she helps them solve like crimes as just like somebody who's monitoring how things are done in the police. It's very lovely. And then I just started watching So Help Me Todd with which um, Kale Bliss Fish is also really into. And that's a really great watch too. And there are like a ton of episodes. I'm like, how have you never told me about this? Mm -hmm. I just saw mm -hmm. it like on my Australian, like what to watch on TV blog. They were really into it. So I was like, I'll give it a shot. It's great. That's I'm awesome. like, man, Paramount, mm -hmm. killing it. So far, nobody has guessed the trivia question, which is which other wrestler has been in Star Trek? Um, I'll give you a hint. He was an enterprise and it is a he. Yeah. And here's another hint. He was also an actor out there. I know what you're thinking, but wrestlers don't act. Everything they do is totally real. But the thing is, here's, <clears throat> here's a hint from this actor slash wrestler. Here's a quote, a famous quote of his. He says, well, I don't know how famous, but he says, I got about $200. I got about $200. Who said that? We already got the big show. We got the Trek reviewer. We got the big show. We got the rock already. But this guy that goes, I got about $200. I don't know why I want to say John Cena. Or John Cena? Cena? I feel like it's too, too. Yeah. He's like, I could see him saying I know. that. I know. Me too. <laughs> He also <laughs> says know. the line, I'm not going to say how he says it, but he says, that's my bike, punk. I said it in a regular voice, not the way he says it. He says, that's my bike, punk. No way. Yep. April got it. Good job, Frazier's April. Office. April nailed it. April Banner. Very good. Oh. Tommy Lister. Tiny Tommy Lister. Who was he? Who, he played Debo on Friday. Uh, that's what I was quoting. Oh, and yes. he was also a wrestler. He wrestled against Hulk Hogan way back in the day. And they yeah. did a movie together. I can't remember what it was. No Holds Barred, I think. He was the Klingon, if I remember correctly, in the pilot episode oh, of Enterprise. Oh. Running through the cornfield and all that, remember? In Broken yeah. Bow. Broken yeah. Bow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, I believe crazy. that. Yeah. It's pretty good. Let's see if there's nice. anybody else. Well, and I'm looking him up and he's on a bicycle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Oh, yes. Yeah. And wasn't there a basketball player who also did a cameo? James Worthy. 
Thank James you. Woody did. Yes. He did he was the the Klingon that poured the wine. Yes. On the floor. Yeah. Six nine. Yeah. Played for the Lakers. Six, nine. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. In that time, Michael Jordan was almost on Star Trek. Really? Yeah. That was I mean, Space Pitch. Jam. <laughs> space Jam. Oh, right. That's right. Yes. Space Jam. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay i can't think of any others so let's move on no mercifully well, I, I forgot also like new fraser is on paramount which i haven't watched yet mm-hmm. i need to because i new watched fraser. The oh, how was it i it, it got much better than the first episode right but <laughs> I mean, the first episode wasn't bad at all, but I, I liked it. I enjoyed it after. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't gone there. Yeah. I haven't gone Dead there. Dead Purple 7 in the live chat has one of uh, Debo's quotes. Uh, New Fraser sounds like a city in Connecticut or something. I know, it? it does. Or New Brunswick. <laughs> it does. Yeah. All right. New Brunswick. Right. Who but I really called? liked the episodes with Lilith. So I yeah. So I've always I liked Lilith. Be. Lilith is <laughs> yeah. I just love how much their relationship is. Oh, yeah. It makes me feel better. <laughs> All right, let's read more of this because there's so code. much good stuff here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It continues, according to the same report, the post Skydance Paramount merger plan would call for teaming up with another media company for a streaming joint venture in the USA. Oh, it's always locked. It's always country locked. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Jenny, you'll have to watch it on like Canada.gov or something, whatever you guys watch <laughs> it on. <laughs> .edu. <laughs> it continues. A new report in Bloomberg confirms Skydance wants to quote, preserve the Paramount Plus streaming service and explore merging it with a peer such as Peacock or Max, unquote. Are they peers? I don't know. Hmm. A deal with Amazon Prime Video has also been considered, oh, according to Bloomberg. Earlier this year, it was reported that Paramount had opened up discussions with Comcast to merge Paramount Plus with their Peacock streaming service. That's a lot of companies in one sentence. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The companies already operate the Sky Showtime joint venture in several markets in Europe. I was going to say, is it? Paramount already merged with Showtime? Max. Or no. I it was they Max. already with Showtime. HBO Showtime. Max. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. You're right. You're right. Yeah. It's also confusing. Yeah. Yeah. It's very confusing. It's very confusing. Get a little bit hmm. more on this. A merged Paramount Plus Peacock streaming service could be a winner, according to Anthony Pascal. According to new, oh wait, no, according to new consumer research reported today by Variety, 45% of U.S. consumers said they would be interested in such a bundle. Analysis from consulting firm FTI Delta estimates uh, estimates a bundle service could bring in $1 billion more than the current combined annual revenue of both services. Wow, that's... Hmm. Do it. It's just annoying because, like, I mean, it, at a certain point, then it starts just being cable again, except we're buying all cable pieces. Oh, Dude, yeah. A billion, yeah. A billion dollars could get us one and a half more Discovery episodes. <laughs> so <laughs> I thought you were going to say one and a half new subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> Rude. <laughs> one and a half new households. Isn't that how they... Yeah. <laughs> uh, so if the deal with Skydance happens... It looks like some version of Paramount Plus will survive. This would likely continue to be the primary home for original Star Trek television. Being part of a larger service could help ensure funding for more seasons and new Trek series and streaming movies as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this it's this sounds like this is all good news, not worrisome news, but like especially because the stock price is rising on Paramount as like this is coming out. Which is great news. Yes. Yes, because when the stock is high, business 
people are happy. And when the business people are happy, then they say, yes, creative people, go make some stuff. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yep. I'm all for it. That, that's uh, how we just, make stuff now. Read the rest of this just because there's yes. every, every single bit of this, not to read the entire article, but the whole article is good stuff. Yeah. Uh, lastly, it says, of course, of course, none of this is finalized. The first step is for Skydance and Paramount Global to agree to a deal, and any such deal would have to be approved by board. This can get trickery, tricky as the Skydance deal being contemplated is a rather complicated two-step process, like the UTEP two-step that Tim Hardaway used to do, if you remember him. <laughs> and current Paramount Global investors are expressing concerns over the deal structure being favorable. Sherry Redstone, wait. To Sherry oh, Redstone. Yeah. Yes. To Sherry Redstone, but not regular shareholders. There would also be scrutiny from regulators as well. Mount up. Nice. Regulators, Ooh. mount up. Nice. Yeah, mount up. Yes. You know. You know. Yes. Dave Gregory knows. <laughs> he gets it. Anyway, so this is all great news, right? Yes, actually. So much better than it has been the past few months. Mm -hmm. As like stocks were dropping, it felt like way too fast and for way too long. It was kind of scary. Yeah. But we don't know for sure. This was speculation. Um, it was also said that it could be merged with HBO Max or it could be merged with Amazon or bought by Amazon. Those feel like weirder fits. What do you guys think? Do you think Peacock is a top choice? The others are better. Do you think Netflix maybe? Mm -hmm. I love Amazon. United with Netflix. Yeah, I don't think Amazon is a weird fit at all because they do make movies and they do make television content. Yeah. They, they, and they have sports content too. So. Yeah. And they also kind of, bun they kind of have like a bunch of other streamers sort of right. under their umbrella. Right. Um, yeah. That's like great for Star Trek because that's such a huge audience. That's like, the thing. Yeah. Because so I many people. Like, yeah. I feel like Peacock is like the lamest of all of them, even though that's probably the most like mm -hmm. it does seem like it's a logical marriage between the two. But I just feel like is Paramount getting like the raw end of that deal then? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know, because Peacock does Maybe. have a lot of great content on it as well. Yeah, but but I do go to Amazon more for to watch stuff than Peacock. Yeah. I never go to well. I guess I don't go to either. Yeah, Amazon <laughs> I don't go is to more. Either of, of those. Yeah, I think Amazon I think more people Peacock. have Amazon sort of as a default. Yes, than yeah. Paramount. Well, because that's people, what it is. Is because yeah. they have a completely different product as well. Yeah. Paramount doesn't have that fallback. Like Amazon and Apple, TV and film might as well be hobbies for them. Yes, <laughs> they, their entire company. For the productions I could go under, and I'm just guessing here, and they might might be like, huh, I guess we'll just have to keep making billions on other stuff. Yeah. Anyway, weird Tuesday, huh, guys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, April Banner says, all two-step makes me think of is chili. Are we talking mm. about TLC? Perfect. Like Left Eye and T-Boz? Chili <laughs> or <laughs> Don't go chasing waterfalls. Right. Nice. <laughs> what? Because otherwise, I don't see what the connection between two step and chili is. Hmm. Well, it makes me think of country western, and that's definitely two step and chili country. Okay. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. Stumped. Well, let's move on. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I don't know. So let's move on because we've got some very interesting things to cover here. Ooh. Actually, this is from ScreenRant.com, everybody. Ooh, you may enjoy what? this one. I know. Can you believe it? Wow. This is interesting. This is from our good buddy, John Orchiola over at ScreenRant.com. Everybody give him a follow at Back of the Head on Twitter. That's at Back of the Head on social media. Why should you do that? Well, that, so every time he writes a new Star Trek article, you can like it and retweet it. Why would you do that? 
Well, because then he can keep doing it and yeah. do way more of it. And we can get more Star Trek coverage and keep growing this thing that we love. Mm -hmm. At back of the head. Okay, so this reads, Discovery's new captain is, quote, tough to like, but hard not to love, unquote, says Star Trek director. He's an authority. Star Trek Discovery director Doug Arniakowski, sorry, Doug Arniakowski, predicts fans will warm up to Captain Rayner just as they did to Captain Shaw in Star Trek Picard. That is a very apt comparison. What, what do you guys think? Very mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. Totally. And just and like I, Shaw, I like, I like him. More. Yeah. I like him very much. Yeah. Right off the bat. Yeah. I like him way more really? than Shaw. Mm -hmm. That's my hot take. You like Rainer more than Shaw already? Yeah, well, I guess my issue is that Picard, I was like, oh, stop taking screen time away from my beloveds. Um, <laughs> but Disco, I just feel like he's a really fun wild card. Mm. Yeah, he adds something very different to um, the cast, a very yeah. different flavor to the cast. Yeah, and I like that flavor. Mm -hmm. It's a bit spicy. Yeah. yeah. He's, He's also on been my demoted. end of the buffet. Yeah, I'm What has. if he gets demoted like every episode? <laughs> and then by like episode five, he's an ensign. And then. Oh, but then he gets promoted and promoted and promoted. Yeah. I feel like he's like, like Tom a older version of Randy Frank. Well, I was going to say, like, Randy Frank from Lambda Quadrant is going to get to cosplay him like when he's old. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> Every time I keep coming on the screen, I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> so uh, this article is fun because it says it actually introduces us to a couple new things here. Um, it reads in the silver at screenrant.com. It reads Doug Arniakoski was a guest on the Ooh. seventh rule. Interesting Ooh. podcast with Sirach Lofton and Ryan T. Husk to discuss directing Star Trek Discovery Season 5, Episode 2. When Lofton insightfully compared Captain Rayner to Captain Liam Shaw, that's a Sirach Lofton special right there, mm -hmm. Todd Stashwood, mm -hmm. from Star Trek Picard Season 3, who fans disliked at first, but became a beloved breakout character. Arnie Akoski agreed that Rayner has the same potential. Read their mm -hmm. conversation and watch the seventh rule below. Doug says, quote, He's amazing. He's new to the ship, new to the crew, new to the cast. Season five, there's a lot of history backing into that. And it's so interesting that you just saw Shaw, if you will. I mean, look, Shaw is Quint, Quentin Jaws. You hate that guy. You hate Quint when he comes on the ship and he's like, let's catch that shark. And then Strock says, then you start easing on to him. You start liking him. And then you can watch the thing below. The video is mm -hmm. included somewhere. It is. Oh, there's awesome. no, actually, there's more to this. Awesome. I thought the video was next. But um, one Trek fan says Captain Rainer is already my favorite. Of what? Captain ever? I, I don't know. <laughs> she just says he's already her favorite. <laughs> I want to know from people. Like I saw, I can't remember who's made the comment. Like I feel like there's an instant love of him if you're a Battlestar fan. Also, yes, kind of plays into it. But I will say, like I've only done one episode with him in it in Battlestar so far, so I'm pretty neutral, and I instantly love him. Like, I don't remember him oh, yeah. in Battlestar. Who was he? He was Leoben. Oh, yeah, he, that was really He's in good. it all the way through, yeah. He's amazing. Yeah, he was nice and weird, kind of, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I yeah. haven't seen it in a long time. I like it. I mm -hmm. like it. Yeah, yeah, he's fantastic. Hmm. Uh, now, the rest of the quote is uh, as follows. Doug says, you start going, I understand who this guy is. This guy is just driven. He's got a directive. He's got a target. He knows what he's firing at. He knows what he's doing. He's got the experience. You may not like that he's rough around the edges, but at the end mm -hmm. of the day, he's trying to catch the shark. He's trying to catch the shark. And I think that Shaw had that in Picard. And I think you're going to see that in Discovery. 
a character that is tough to like, but eventually you'll see is hard not to love. And now we can all make that joke when somebody says, don't you like Captain Rayner? And you go, no, I don't like him. I love him. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what like also made him in- like instantly interesting is the fact that he had like a previous relationship with Vance. And it sort of mm. like brings a lot to the table to be like, oh, how do they know each other? Like, especially in like the burn years, like how were mm-hmm. they like they must have been pretty close to like be able to be working together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And dying in a war. Mm-hmm. Well, lucky for you, there actually is more from another Screen Rant article here. I know what I don't know what we did to deserve this, but we got another one. This is also written by John Orchiola. Man, this guy's so to preface this, John Orchiola just had an exclusive interview um, with Captain Rayner or whatever number one, the new number one, which is that hasn't been released yet. So this is like the little tease to that. And there's some really cool backstory plot. Like the article is mm. mainly about the fact that he seems to have a history with M- Locke and Maul. And mm. um, that'll be divulged like as the season goes on, hopefully. Super fascinating. And I can't so, wait for those interviews. Rainer might be uh, Lisa's favorite character, but it's my favorite cherry. If anybody's ever had Rainier cherries. That's definitely my favorite cherry. Really good. Oh, I have. They're kind of like the they're like white ones with little splotches oh. of red, little streaks, you know? Hey, yeah. Those. They're like peaches practically. Big, I know juicy. what they look oh, like, wait. but I've never had one. Outstanding. Yeah. Hmm. They're like not like you know, they're not like the red tart ones. They're like bigger, plumper, sweeter. Oh, nice. Delicious. I love how we're anyway. back on fruit again. Yum. I want some Rainier cherries now. I'll tell you that much. What do you think, Anne Marie? Oh, I was catching up on this. <laughs> I love all cherries. <laughs> no, all Very, right. I just every time I see one Trek fan, I'm like, oh my gosh, when is my Star Trek mag- Explorer magazine coming so that I can <laughs> read the new collectible corner? Didn't you say it might already have arrived in the mail? It might. I'm like, I'm seeing people start saying like it's gone out in the mail. So I meant to go check right. my mail, but I forgot because I didn't have my key. Do you think you have time? Um. Yeah. I mean, it's no pressure. Just you know, in case you wanted to do well, it. Well, it'll be like a five minute ordeal because I have to wait for the elevator. Oh dear. Well, dear dealer's choice. So. uh Here's the article. It reads, Star Trek Discovery's Rainer actor hints at a backstory with season five's new villains. Exclusive. Mm-hmm. See, when you're someone cool in the media, like Joshua M. Patton, John Archiola, mm-hmm. Anthony Pascal, Laurie Ulster, you get exclusive with these actors, yeah. um, which is pretty cool especially when there's like a new actor that nobody knows we don't know what the actor acts Mm -hmm. like we don't know what the character is going to have it's got to be really exciting to sit down with a new character a new actor and just say all right what's going to happen here what what do you Mm -hmm. have in store for us Mm -hmm. and back of the head also says i have an article about rainer's backstory with vance coming tomorrow nice that's too many articles we have the line must be drawn here. <laughs> and no further. <laughs> That's right. All right. Uh, so it says exclusive. The cause of Star Trek Discovery Season 5's animosity between Rainer, Maul, and Locke will be revealed, says mm. actor Callum Keith Rennie. So that's really interesting. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's why, uh, as Doug Arniakoski is saying, like, going after the shark or Ahab going after the whale or something. Right. Maybe it's personal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not just that like he's so driven to get the job done. Yeah. There's something personal yeah. there, right? Yeah. I immediately thought Ahab and, and the white whale. Yeah. Great comparison. Yeah. Hmm. 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 Yeah. I'm really interested. I'm, I'm interested to see what the, what it is because then also Vance was talking about how he's so, you know, that that what's best for the Federation and mm-hmm. that that actually is like 
his his motivation most of the time so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well so yeah they they've done a pretty good job at laying that foundation in the first two episodes showing that this is a very personal mission yeah for him, mm-hmm. which is nice to see yeah. got me yeah. intrigued i'm very curious to see what what happens with that <laughs> interesting yeah, and Vance uh, is the one that fired him or gave him the mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the early but, retirement. Right, but he did that for the safety of the Federation because the guy was being right. a little too reckless. Yeah. And that's why they wrote the song, The Safety Vance. Am I right? Yes, absolutely. I don't know that song. <laughs> you can Vance if you want to. Oh, right? no. You can leave yes. your stuff behind. <laughs> Everybody I does, love right? men without hats. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Everybody vants now. So <laughs> Star Trek Discovery Season 5's new series regular, Callum Keith Rennie. And please let me know in the live chat if we're pronouncing that last name correctly, Rennie. Hints at the backstory between his character, Captain Rayner, and Season 5's new villains, Maul and Locke. All three debuted in Star Trek Discovery Season 5's premiere, Red Directive. And the animosity between the surly Starfleet captain of the USS Antares and the rogue Bonnie and Clyde-like lovers was immediately clear. Rayner's obsession with capturing Locke and Maul puts him at odds with Captain Michael Burnham, who nonetheless offers Rayner the first officer role on the USS Discovery after he's demoted. Some people said they saw that coming. I did not. I did. I sent you that text. <laughs> yeah. I did not. Usually I can, I feel like I can see things coming. I did not. I thought Booker was going to be well, spoiler, see, everybody. That was the moment I knew that it wasn't going to be Booker and that it was going to be Rainer. Mm-hmm. The and last, I, be, yeah. Before Saru said Booker, I said Rainer. Oh, Rainer. And then he said Booker. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah, hmm. yeah, you can't so be just bringing in. That. Yeah. So here's the quote. It's a minor one. It's a subtle one. He says, there's a backstory that kind of lets you know why he's wired the way he's wired and why Maul and Locke, why the Maul and Locke thing is getting him in a way that's wound him up. Maybe. <laughs> so Maybe. clearly... <laughs> This actor is being very careful, Mm -hmm. just kind of tiptoeing. He's like, maybe there's a backstory. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe. Maybe Maybe. there's a reason for all. Uh Uh-oh. Amory's got a giant smile. Does that mean it's... I'm so excited. This was my Christmas Hanukkah present to myself. Like, I'm so excited. Yeah. 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 Okay, so this issue is all Discovery and Prodigy. Gather up. But the reason, the number one reason I buy it is for the collector's guide um, page by Lisa Herrero, one Trek fan in the live chat. Oh my god, and it's just amazing. And this this week she's doing three different things. Oh, like the sixties. It's amazing. Oh, nice. Can't recommend it enough. It's so exciting. Then I get to feel so cool because, like, I know someone with a column in the official Star Trek magazine. <laughs> Love it. That's unbelievable. She is a amazing. published author. Yes. Right. Yes. I love that. Like, this is so big time. And then Larry Nemechek also has a column. Yeah. A fistful of, da- a fistful of data. He should, he should have his column named Meanie. That would be funny. <laughs> Right? Wouldn't that be good? Yes. <laughs> you know? Ooh, yeah. Uh Amory, can you just give us all an idea of what is in the Star Trek Explorer? Just tell us what the title okay, is. First of all, okay. Of the this, uh, this issue is a hundred pages. And it's so fun. They have like a page to add for like the autobiography. That's awesome. So autobiography. Top 10 temporal incursions. It's so good. And like Oh, whoa, Larry has two different things. He's a lost and found with like 
when he goes to his archive and finds pictures. This was like from the set with Archer on Enterprise. Oh, That's cool. cool. Like, wow. cool. It's like cool Polaroids. Is that, is that Rick Berman with him or who is that? No, I don't know who that is with him. Oh. Um, Longtime co-producer Brad J- Jacobian. Oh, yeah. oh, I never saw what he looked like before. It's amazing because it's not just. I mean, like, there's so much promotional stuff for Discovery because it's just starting, but yeah, it really covers like everything. It's just amazing. I mm. love this magazine so much. Uh, and it smells like mm, it smells like new magazine. <laughs> it's like such a childhood smell of like Discovery <laughs> or highlights. The funny thing is that every single person knows what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. We're all like, yep, uh huh, I get it. Just like you can smell uh, comic books. You know what comic books yeah. smell like. There's the a picture of like those big red elementary school balls, those giant things. And you're like, oh I can, my I can, mm-hmm. I can yes. smell and hear this picture, right? You can yeah. hear yes. that phone. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, listen to this. So there's like a puzzles, like word search, puzzles and more. And it's called Hollow Pursuits. Like nice. it's so well done and brilliant. I love those things. Ugh. Best decision I ever made. That and joining Center. Oh, so much fun. Oh, here's a good decision. Oh my decision. God, there's even a spread on Kern. Finally. Like, Poor Kern. Kern, Kern spreading. Thing. All right, so. I mean, don't you need six pages of full color Kern? Duh. So good. I think so, I guess. There's a lot about Prodigy, though which is mm. amazing and like him and brothers interviews good that's great mm-hmm. oh and david mack has they're also like so they also feature short stories and like mm. people that we know from interviews and who have written a lot of books like david mack will write short stories for this and then there's actually a digital sub- supplement which will have like four additional short stories that are so good james awesome. black's two last year or last last edition about like there was one about Nog at Starfleet. Mm. There's, they're all amazing. I love. Oh, I can't recommend that it enough. Was it's so such much fun. a good story. I yeah. loved that story, and it had um, the gardener in it, and I'm blanking on his name. Boothby. Yeah. Boothby. Boothby. Yes, it had. And Boothby also, in it. Keiko O'Brien wasn't. Didn't she have? Uh, wasn't she a botanist? Yeah. You know, she know was a she pro was in gardener. The short story. But no, I'm just saying she was. Saying, she was story, yeah. I'm just saying she's also she's a, a also a gardener type person. Ryan's right. just listing all the gardeners in Star Trek. Yeah, Picard <laughs> was tying vines and all good exactly. Mm-hmm. Boimler too, and Saru's a gardener yeah, as that's well. That's right. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Is that all of them? Mm. Boimler's raisins. Yeah, you got that. Oh, Cass. <gasps> yes. Hmm. Kess worked in the Arboretum, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Ian Spelling is a really fun thing here where he does like a quick hit with like 10 different actors from like multiple different series. And it's like, where is the weirdest place you've been recognized? And it's like Jeffrey Combs and Q and Tasha Yar. He must like work on these when he's interviewing people for like for cons too. That's a great question. Shout out to Ian Spelling. Mm -hmm. One of the best Star Trek writers of all time. And cool dude, by the way. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, it's so good. Yeah. We know what Amory's doing tonight. This is good stuff. You know, that I can never, the pictures you know us. that I'm gonna have these for forever too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like there's no way I can ever throw these away. And one day I'm gonna have to have Lisa sign her call up screen. Yes. So cool. I so love amazing. that. So however, this is also a very interesting article from mm-hmm. cinemablend.com. Everybody, mm-hmm. cinemablend.com. It's entitled, We Asked Star Trek Discovery Mary Wiseman about the Starfleet Academy series, and her response is all I need. Oh, my. I thought thought all I need is just a little more time to be sure what I feel. Nice. I thought all that I need is the air that I breathe. Oh. (laughs) And to love you. Oh. Oh. Isn't that part of it? Yeah. That's di- that yeah. This yeah. I went blind melon. 
but yeah. <laughs> we all went, we all went for it, except for Amory, who was just reading her magazine. Well, I was just responding. Sorry. I was responding to one Chuck fan. I just think it's so cool because like the whole magazine is people basically who worked in Star Trek in some capacity. Here's Lisa having her own full page column every time. It's amazing. Like mm-hmm. what a rock star. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. awesome. Did you say Blind Melon? Did they cover that song? I think it's simply No, red. it's different. No, no, no. No, no. You're right. Oh, okay. But Blind Melon also has a song with all that I need is the air that I breathe and all that really matters is what matters to me. It like goes off in a different direction. Whoa. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Who sings the song All I Need is Just a Little More Time to Be Sure What I Feel? Remember that song? No. Wait, I don't want to sing it. It's kind of high pitched. It's not. It's not like just a little. No, it's not. Yeah, no. That was. Those are two of the words. Yeah. (laughs) It's not Corey Hart, right? No. Just a little more time is all. No. Jack Wagner. I did not know that. Yeah. Jack Wagner. I did not know that either. Nobody knows that one. Okay. Anyway, so here is wait Jack Wagner from General Hospital. Mm. <laughs> Go on. Anne Marie's totally just reading her <laughs> magazine. She just checked out. <laughs> That's thing. it. They have one of those things where it's like a uh there are two pictures and you've just spot the difference between the pictures. Oh, those are fun. It's, so it's like we're fun. it's like we're seven year olds waiting at the dentist office all over it again. It literally right? is. <laughs> it's like this random picture and it's not even in HD. And it's like spot the difference. And they're amazing. really intricate. It's amazing. I hope it has a picture of an orange cat when it says that. Oh no, but there is talk a spot on that same page. There's so I can't believe this is a hundred pages of amazingness. It's like that's people awesome. Really know their star. I just love that this exists. It's what a gift. Mm-hmm. I can't believe it was only twenty five dollars for the year too. Like the best. Really? Deal. Oh. Well, like okay. actually, I guess they're ten dollars if you buy them by the issue. But right. I thought they were like Christmas special. Mm-hmm. So here's the oh, point of this article that. here. Um, because we're gonna mm. skip to the point oh, here. Okay. He says, I've theorized Mary Wiseman would have a role in Starfleet Academy ever since her character took a teaching job at the school and season four featured what felt like a backdoor pilot on backdoor pilot to the spinoff. Uh, at the same time, I recognize that if Wiseman was involved in the spinoff, she likely couldn't tell me since the series' place in the timeline was not publicly known when I spoke to her at the junket for Star Trek Discovery. As such, I mentioned how interesting it was that season five established that she was still teaching at the Academy, considering the spinoff was in development. I tried to get a response about her involvement by presenting a hypothetical about (laughs) returning to Trek. After a short pause, (laughs) Wiseman said the following. Man, awesome. don't try to get me. Don't you try to get me. <laughs> we can be friends or we can be enemies. She was saucy because they recorded the interview as well. And she was like eyeballing him when he was <laughs> asking the question. <laughs> yeah. The way she said, we could be friends or we could be enemies. So good. <laughs> Sounds like a yes. Mm. I mean, that's. So I think where he goes not with a this no. is like, yeah, <laughs> come on. If it was a no, she would just say no. Yeah. I mean, that's basically the gist of the article. But there is yeah. a, my, Mick Jost has done a couple other, Mick Jost was on our show once, yeah, has done course. a couple other really great articles too. And usually his are a lot more like, um, just like theories about things and not necessarily all interviews. And he did a really mm-hmm. good one. I thought about like how to him, um season five of discovery is feeling very much like voyager and i i have to i have to agree is it is giving me voyager vibes but it'll be interesting to see like if that continues (laughs) get off my ship okay (laughs) that's all i got on that area there's some like crazy people you're trying to track down like Hmm. Okay, so Anne Marie, you've got an interesting article here. Oh. No, we're gonna tease it. Okay. 
we're going to tease it. This was your early birthday present, a sports article. Thank you. Thank you. My birthday yeah. is in 363 days. So everybody <laughs> mark your calendars. It's very soon. Uh, okay. It's not really for anybody that knows my birthday. It's not, it wasn't two days ago. So this news comes from creationentertainment.com. Mm -hmm. How many of you have noticed that there's been a lot of news coming out of creationentertainment.com? Because I sure have. And that news <laughs> is as follows. It seems like they are announcing a ton of new Trek tour conventions. Mm -hmm. Trek tour conventions. Boy, that sounds suspiciously, suspiciously like something I want to go to every year in Las Vegas. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Look at these headliners. Ethan Peck, William Shatner, Walter Koenig, Paul Wesley, Doug Jones, Sonequa Martin-Green. Get off my ship. Um, <laughs> look at this. 55 yeah. incredible guests so far. What a great group. Oh, that is a look at this stallion. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He seems pretty Chase, cool. Chase <laughs> is like, did you just call him a stallion? Okay. <laughs> he'd be, just like, more like he'd be he delighted to that, know right? you called him a stallion. Yeah. And Connor's like, call me a stallion, Ryan. <laughs> All right. Anyway, lots of amazing people. Wow, Eric Menyuk. That's a, that's a good one. What? Yeah, that's awesome. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. my gosh, that's amazing. Of yeah, that's seventh awesome. rule of fame. Everybody knows uh -huh. Eric Pierpoint, a virtual Trekcon virtual two Trek fame. Game. Anyway, so many great people. Jen Maley, we love her as yeah. well. Here's a new one. Michael Dante, mm -hmm. Mob from the Whoa. original series. Wow. Ray Wise, wow, yeah. sci-fi legend. Yeah. Sean Kenny, our buddy. Sandy Gimple of Virtual mm -hmm. Trekcon 5 fame. That's a Larry Nemechek special right there. Tawny uh -huh. Newsom, Sonequa, wow. A lot of our friends. Anyway, the point is, we go to this every year, right? No big yes. deal. We love it. Cool. No wow. big deal. You mean like the best time of life? But have you noticed, I mean, you know, that's, we, we go every year, but everybody seems to be noticing that this is the talk of the town. There are more dates jumping up everywhere. Yeah. It's not just Las Vegas now. We've got Nashville in September. We've got Chicago also in September. Yes, and I already scouted that hotel. <laughs> We've got Secaucus, New Jersey. In November, which I've found is actually very close to Manhattan. I didn't realize it was that close. Like across, across the river. Yeah, you could throw a nickel into Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've got Dallas also in November. What? That's five conventions just in the second half of this year. That's a lot of conventions. Wow. Then in January, we've got San Francisco again, because if you'll recall, oh, they had their very first Trek tour in san francisco uh last march last month and it was amazing and the breakfast or, buffet was incredible yes. orlando <laughs> wow charlotte okay so everybody in the live chat first of all we're being completely spoiled and i'm so excited tell us besides las vegas or including las vegas which of these are you most likely to go to? Is it just one? Is it Ooh. for them? Are you going to Charlotte and Vegas? Are you going to Secaucus and Vegas? Are you going to Dallas and Nashville? Are you like, I'm waiting till they go to Shreveport? You know, what's, <laughs> <laughs> what's your situation? How many of these are you going to and which ones? Tell us specifically. Hmm. The ones announced are... Again, Vegas, Nashville, Chicago, Secaucus, Dallas, San Francisco, Orlando, and Charlotte. 
Those are some good ones. What about you, Melissa? Which ones are you going to? <laughs> to BB. <laughs> to BB. Yeah. Probably Vegas, right? Definitely Vegas. Yes. <laughs> but I that's a given. <laughs> it feels like a given. But what about yeah. you, Henny Hansen? I got to figure it out. Um, you got a pen out. You're writing dates down. <laughs> it's funny because because New Jersey right now is the only one I definitely can't do, even though it's the one that's closest to me because I have a convention here that weekend. Wow. I know. Um, but like. Chicago. Dallas? These are all places I've never mm. been. This is very exciting. I haven't been to a lot of these either. San Francisco? Hello? I know. Oh, been there. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm definitely going to that one. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't I been like, to Charlotte, mm. yeah. Orlando, Nashville, Secaucus, mm -hmm. Chicago. I've only been to Vegas, San Francisco, and Dallas as far as mm -hmm. cities I've been to out of those. Yeah. yeah. I've been to Dallas. I've been to Orlando. Yeah. Dallas Chicago, was a really big I've been airport. To as well. Dallas yes. is huge. Yeah. All yeah. right. So in the live chat, Lucia out in Brazil says going to Vegas is all I can do. Well, flying pretty far, so that's yeah. understandable. Mm -hmm. Anne Marie in the live chat says, Chicago. Oh, that's pretty close to your family. That's why right? I'm going with my parents. Right. Awesome. Like maybe a brother. <laughs> yeah. So that'll be fun. That'll be good. Plus, what I uh, love about them is that, like, the ho they're at hotels that are, like, right by the airport. So you just, like, fly in. Some of them even have a free shuttle so you don't have to pay for Uber. And then you're right that's there. That's amazing. I love it. Yeah, mm. so Dead Purple 7 says Las Vegas and maybe San Francisco. Yeah, you're kind of in between Las Vegas and San Francisco mm. in, the, in the Central yeah. Valley there. So it's San probably, like... so fun. Three hours, two or three hours to San Francisco, and maybe like four or five to Vegas for you. April Banner says Secaucus in all capital letters. She's like, finally, finally. Well, I want to go to that one because I haven't been back to New York in mm. too long, and there's so many friends to see there. <laughs> yeah. New Yorkers. Yeah, I've never <laughs> been to New York myself either. Oh, wow. I haven't Even been I've to Secaucus or New York, yeah. Mm. Uh, Faith Howell says, I already tried to book a hotel room in Charlotte. They're not yes. open yet. Wow, oh, that's, amazing. that's a real fan right there. Wow. That's legit. Well, can I Can I, ha I have a confession? I've been looking at um, vendor tables at these different locations, and they're not open yet. So, ah. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> yeah all right that's why it's tbd <laughs> but it's possible mm -hmm. um let's see back of the head says vegas definitely maybe san yes. francisco in january uh joshua m Patton says i could in theory drive to secaucus he needs an emoji of him going like hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> the pondering emoji yeah uh <laughs> What else? Uh, Rashid says, I'll try and go join you all in STLV. I'll be in Canada at the time. I'll try to fly over for a day. Wow, that's... Yeah, Whoa. I know. That's super exciting. Whoa, yeah, wow. That's commitment. Yeah. yeah. Bliss, Kale Bliss says, vending Vegas 100%. New Jersey is tempting, but I'd have to miss my local market. It's worth it. Miss mm -hmm. the market. Mm -hmm. uh faith Howell says melissa longo come to charlotte okay <laughs> not to be confused with the harvey danger song carlotta <laughs> valdez oh it's yeah a different I thing it. it's a good song is it super mm -hmm. rocking song carlotta valdez by harvey not danger after, like, the ones... harvey danger was the band that sang flagpole sitta that everybody yes. loved so but much is that carlotta valdez like from the movie hmm. vertigo i don't know I don't know movies. <laughs> I only know songs. Anyway, it's... this is very exciting new development. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, let's see, anybody else volunteering their information? May Barella says STLV and STSF. Mm -hmm. Pondering more. She's out in the Bay Area, so STSF is a guarantee there. Yep, that's cool. Uh, Gregory Kenzo doesn't say it, but he's thinking it. He's like, when are they coming to Hawaii? Yes! <laughs> I mean, it's not, creation does do cons in Hawaii. Yeah. You never know. Yep. Are there some right now that are scheduled in Hawaii? For other there's, things. That are there's definitely Star a supernatural one. Yes. It does Honolulu. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. I'm checking on this website. There has here. been in the past, anyway. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, I don't Dead see Purple it. 7. We got to do a chat pack meetup. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> They definitely yeah, have. I, I think it. even last year they did one. Oh, wow. You think maybe it already happened this year? Yeah. <clears throat> That'd be amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Well, that's cool. So everybody keep an eye on creationentertainment.com because they are expanding big time. And uh, they have a newsletter you can sign up for. Yeah. And like mm. click on Star Trek and it tells you all the updates. And do also it. their social media. All right. Back to the news, everybody. But that was the news. That is news, actually, because that Nashville website it just is. went live like on Friday. <laughs> yeah, it's news. social media has been a buzz with every new drop. Mm. They go, by the way, we're coming to this city. We're coming to that yeah. city. We're yeah. coming to this city. And people are like, what? That's <laughs> only 180 miles from me. I'm going. Yeah, like the massive pro tip that I tell everybody who's like looking into going to a convention or whatever, like. There's one very central mm. Facebook group that has great customer service and it's Star Trek convention experiences run by our friends like Marina Kravchuk. And they just, they're so great and, and organized. Jesse Okendo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Heather and I think there's a fourth person. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, so that also makes helps you make sure that you're not missing anything. Yeah. And it's kind of nice because then you can start seeing like who else is going to them. Great mm -hmm. group. Great group. Great people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh okay so let's move forth april banner says ryan new york is great just avoid times square times arrow all right here we go <laughs> next is it's been long enough we haven't spoken about sports in like 20 minutes so ah. let's get back into sports talk <laughs> nice. Dr. Anne Marie Siegel, you found this excellent article about sports. about sports. It says four other sports teams we'd love to see Star Trek sponsor. Star Trek sponsored a soccer team in Berlin. And That's boy, so does cool. that give us ideas. Mm -hmm. Whoa, what a fun Wait, article. I'm cool in a shirt. I'm like, That's how is everybody so cool. not talking about this? This is amazing. I can't believe this. How did nobody know about this? This is amazing. Look at this. Their logo know, has a giant so Star Trek. So cool. Delta on it. Look at that. Yeah, that's wild. Okay. So everybody in the live chat, which professional sports team would you like Star Trek to sponsor next? We're about mm -hmm. to read this article and their guesses or their wishes. What professional sports team would you like to see Star Trek sponsor next? Okay. Hmm. So this could be fun. Hmm. First is, oh, here's a good one. Let me pull this up. Winnipeg Jets in That's hockey. That's what I was thinking. Yes. Really? Good job. <laughs> yes. That's my Winnipeg team. The Winnipeg Jets are one of the best teams in the, in the NHL during the 2023 to 2024 season. They have 47 wins, 24 losses, and three ties. Why are they giving us all this information? I don't know. Well, let me first say <laughs> that it's because this particular soccer club in Berlin is sponsored by Paramount Plus. So they sort of like somehow, I guess, got to choose which part of Paramount Plus they wanted on their jerseys. That's so, amazing. I don't exactly know like how they how that part got ironed out, but... It is super cool. And unfortunately, the team lost, but I'm sure they'll get uh, back in the game. They'll be back. Number three, however, okay. are the New York Jets. Yeah. Sorry, that's a more famous Jets, I guess, which also begs the question, how many of the four professional, major professional North American sports teams 
share the same name, like the Jets. I could rattle off like seven or eight. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Jets. Number two is, oh, this is oh, a good one. Baseball, the Houston Astros. That's the other one I was thinking of. Yes. Okay, then what's number one? Oh. Uh. (laughs) Oh, the Houston Rockets. Oh, Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. That seems like a pretty good fit. Yeah. Yeah, It does. Mm -hmm. Houston, we have a problem. Mm Next page for number one. Yep. Houston Rockets, basketball, <laughs> NBA. Come on. Hey. hey. That's fun. That is fun. That's really you guys, hard. Do you guys have any other fun ideas for that? Hmm. No, but um, Rashid in the live chat says Manchester United. Woohoo. Uh, yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Woohoo. Yeah. And Matt Boardman says the Warriors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're playing Isn't tonight, Marina by Sirtis the way, against the Lakers. Root for Manchester, huh? Marina Sirtis loves Manchester. Does she not? I don't think so. I think it's another team. Is it another one? It is another team because she used to fight with Aaron because they were on opposite teams. Right. And okay. I can't remember which one, but he I was know. Man City. He was Man City okay. and she was something else. Gotcha. Hmm. Or is it Patrick? Man City Smith? sounds fun. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, I can't remember what it is either, but I think yeah. it's. She's also at war against uh, Tim Baum. Tim Baum. Yeah. Right. They he all is... like all the. Yeah. It's like they got so many teams in England. We can't keep up with all of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it... like six teams. Yeah, did, doesn't Tim root for Manchester United as well? Maybe, but that would be Manchester United versus Man City, right? Mm-hmm. Is that? Whoever's oh, like the mm-hmm. you'll never walk alone people. Oh, April Banner says uh, Tottenham. Tottenham Hotspurs. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Yes, that is it. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and Rashid Hot- concurs. Yes. Hotspurs? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, Anne Marie, any other thoughts on that? That's it. Just that the jerseys look amazing. Love that. Yeah, that's awesome. And especially cool since Germany seems to have such a huge amount of Starship fans. They really do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, I guess <laughs> what are you guys laughing about? All this? <laughs> I guess they got an inside joke going on. Anyway, we got to uh, talk about this week very quickly, everybody. Yes. Um, unless there's anything else to pull um, up. I think here. we can like bump the other. There are two other things that are like smaller that we can move to Friday because oh, after few, this. Oh, well, there are just a few things, but yeah. Okay. There's um the Sci-Fi Sisters are doing a live like pancreatic cancer awareness event with the um Trek Against Pancreatic Cancer team. At 930. So right now in seven um, minutes. In, in seven minutes, yes. Let's knock this out then, yes. everybody. You got your marching orders in seven minutes. You guys mm-hmm. better go support. All right. So uh let's see. This Monday, just yesterday, the seventh rule released our full review of everybody knows Anakin Skywalker's most hated Star Trek episode. The high ground. That joke never gets old. It doesn't. Let's say it every <laughs> <That> day. <joke. laughs> uh, with very special guest, Dennis Danger Madalone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unbelievable. Great guest. So everybody go check that out. Love that. On the 7th Rule YouTube channel. It is available in its entirety right now. Then on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, on the Falling Tower YouTube channel. Uh-oh. What is what is on that one? What is that one? I didn't have that pulled up. Melissa, what do we got there? Next. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> on Wednesday, Falling Tower? 
Yeah, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern time. All right, I'll pull I it up. Here it is. I bet you Muhammad. It is. It. I got. It's <laughs> definitely Muhammad. It is X Men '97 on nice. Disney Plus <laughs> with Doctor Eric Spana. Oh, that one is so much fun. How could we forget? Dr. Muhammad Noor and I, along with very special guest Professor Eric Spana, review the brand new show X-Men 97, because this month on the Falling Tower YouTube channel, we're doing new shows, anything that's new, anything that's wild. And uh, we've got professors as our very special guests. Awesome. So we've actually got mm. Professor Xavier joining us to review his own show. It's going to be really cool. Say. Oh, good. <laughs> then uh on thursday at 6 p.m pacific 9 p.m eastern time on the seventh rule youtube channel join us for our review of discovery season five episode three do not miss that it drops on thursday we review it on <laughs> thursday and boom it comes to you 6 p.m pacific 9 p.m eastern time on thursday on the seventh rule youtube channel then on oh friday God. And the fashion in it from those like preview shots looks amazing, especially Tarina. Well, oh I my gosh, her dress. Her dress. Her dress is, uh, Tarina has this like brown dress that's like so oak enough. It's so gorgeous. Oh, like, okay. Sorry to interrupt. I just can't stop looking at it. Not at all. <laughs> we love Vulcan uh fashion. Fashion. <laughs> I didn't know Couture, they had fashion. I thought they're op opposed to fashion. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that they're opposed not to in, emotionality? Then on Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern time, come right back to this channel mm. for some serious fun. Isn't that an oxymoron? Kinda. Serious <laughs> fun, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern time on the virtual TrekCon YouTube channel. It's live, it's nuts. And we want you to join us. It's going to be a great time. Some then might say bananas. Right. <laughs> B-A-N-A-N-A-S. -A -A <laughs> uh, then on uh, Sunday at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern time on the Seventh Rule YouTube channel. What have we got for him, Johnny? A new car! No, it's uh, Deja Q. No, sorry. No, that's not what it is. Oh, boy. It's Sins of the Father. Ooh. So good. <laughs> Next Generation episode, Sins of the Father. So check that yeah. one out. We're still fat. So good. <laughs> yes. I love her. Excellent. She's 9 so a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern time on the 7th Rule YouTube channel. All right. Melissa Longo, where can everybody find you online? Mm, at Melissa Longo on social media. M-A-L-I-S-S-A. And at um, the interpreted republic.com at walking art made by Melissa and walking art made by Melissa on Patreon. Um, new store, new chapter dropping within the next day or two. Mm -hmm. uh, so, who and then oh, and three fat lobsters on the YouTube. Wow, excellent knowledge by Joshua M. Patton in the live chat who says Anakin also hates DS9's image in the sand Ooh. what was that like episode two one or seven, two one. of seven seven, seven season yeah uh because he hates sand because it gets everywhere it gets everywhere <laughs> this yeah. guy gets it mm -hmm. uh not sand but the joke so jenny r johnson where can everybody find you online you can find me on <laughs> social media in a variety of places, many social media platforms. Um, what are those? <laughs> uh, right, Twitter. Yes, Twitter. You can find me <laughs> at Jenny R. Johnson. And pretty well everywhere else you can find me at Jenny R. Johnson Art. I'm also, um, what are we working on? <laughs> Can't stay focused. I'm working on a new painting and I'm updating it on, on, uh, on my social media. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm really excited about it. So you should check it out. And if you want to be updated about it in like, I don't know, a week or so when my newsletter comes out this month, you can sign up for my newsletter, which is at my website, JennyRJohnson.com. Ah. JennyRJohnson.com, everybody, where you can find yes. everything very important. Yes. Dr. Anne Marie Seagull.com. What about you? 
at Anne Marie Siegel one on Twitter. And then I'm putting the link for Trek Against can Pancreatic Cancer with Sci-Fi Sisters in the live chat. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Oh, and I, shout out to Dave Gregory, who has a team for pancreatic cancer. Awesome. So, yeah. Wow. Great so, job, Dave Gregory. Yeah. All right. I guess I like him now. <laughs> Took a while. <laughs> Ryan's been on the fence. Hi, Ryan, where can we find you? Uh, thank you, Anne Marie Siegel, uh, Trekkie MD, walking exclamation point, and resident web crawler. You can find me on twitter.com at Ryan TG Husk. Once again, that's at Ryan TG Husk, or just virtual Trek Con, Falling Tower, or the Seventh Rule on your favorite social media, but right, uh, but especially right here on YouTube. YouTube, what a tongue twister. All right, that's it for us, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. April, who says a new car. Oh my God, I just nearly jumped out of my skin. Ben Janium <laughs> with the cool name, One Trek Fan, who is a published author. Rashid, Greg, Muhammad. Hey, what's up, Muhammad? Yeah. We were just talking about you. Terry, May, Greg again, Joshua, Linda, John, Kale Bliss, Rashid, John, we see all of you. We'll see you next time. And when you want to talk about Sky Vance merger, nice. I used that earlier. Sky Vance, we should. That's a good one. Sky Vance merger, put it on the main viewer. <laughs>